From Our Savior Lutheran Church in West Columbia, South Carolina, this is Daily Prayer for Tuesday, January 12th, 2021. Good morning. We have some... We're going to go on a field trip. That's why I'm dressed up. Okay, I just, you know, I know some of you that watch, uh, and I thank you for watching, um, are not Lutheran, and that's fine. That's fine. Lutherans do things a little bit differently. Uh, and, you know, the joke I say, and I hope you say this about your denomination as well, trying to be charitable to my fellow Christians, I say, no, Lutherans don't have it all right. We just, we just have it the least wrong. Um, okay, maybe that's a little mean-spirited sounding, but I don't mean it. Our views on baptism are different than a lot of Protestants. Our views are more like, um, you know, some Protestants believe that <clears throat> Baptism is simply a sign, a public sign, that you have uh, I, I accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. That might be one expression that you hear out there. In our tradition, it's God that's doing something in baptism. We've got the signs. We see it happen. We generally have a pastor do it. But it's the words of God and the water that makes someone baptized. And it's the first things that we do as a Christian. So yes, we do infant baptism. You can make it a good argument for believer's baptism, uh, but something we do. And certainly Paul was asked to be baptized right away. Let's listen. A reading from Acts chapter 22, verses 2 through 16. When they heard him addressing them in Hebrew, they became even more quiet. Then he said, I am a Jew born in Tarsus in Cilicia, but brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, educated strictly according to our ancestral law, being zealous for God, just as all of you are today. I persecuted this way up to the point of death by binding both men and women and putting them in prison as the high priest and the whole council of elders can testify about me. From them I also received letters to the brothers in Damascus, and I went there in order to bind those who were there and to bring them back to Jerusalem for punishment. While I was on my way and approaching Damascus, about noon a great light from heaven suddenly shone about me. I fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I answered, Who are you, Lord? Then he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Now those who were with me saw the light, but did not hear the voice of the one who was speaking to me. I asked, What am I to do, Lord? The Lord said to me, Get up and go to Damascus. There you will be told everything that has been assigned for you to do. Since I could not see because of the brightness of that light, those who were with me took my hand and led me to Damascus. A certain Ananias, who was a devout man according to the law and well spoken by all the Jews living there, came to me, and standing beside me, he said, Brother Saul, regain your sight. In that very hour I regained my sight and saw him. Then he said, The God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will, to see the righteous one and to hear his own voice. For you will be his witness to all the world of what you have seen and heard. And now why do you delay? Get up, be baptized, and have your sins washed away, calling on his name. Yeah, get up. And get baptized, is what Paul is told. So it's the very first, it's one of the symbol, or one of the things that the baptism font does is act as the watery womb of a Christian. It's at, it's at the baptismal font that they are reborn. Uh, and that's, when, that's where we consider someone who's born again, they're born right then and there. And there's water to show it. My Baptist friends, I know you say, yeah, but they don't do full immersion baptism. We don't. Uh, 
I like the way that you guys do that. I think that's a good, solid tradition and conveys what's actually happening uh, a little bit better than the way we do. I just think, uh, you know, we realize it's not anything we do. It's something God is doing. And so, but, you know, we're thankful for baptism. So let's take that little field trip right now. And here we are. I am in full uniform. And uh, this is a Thanksgiving prayer. It's a Thanksgiving for baptism. We use lots of parts of this prayer in our actual baptism services. Uh, but this is where we do it. I've had the good pleasure of baptizing young children and older folks and, uh, you know, all kinds of people. Uh, welcome them in to become children of God. And we're thankful for that gift and thankful for the privilege. We give you thanks, O God. For in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit. Renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be honor and glory through the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We won't do the Lord's Prayer today, just as Martin Luther would have said, remember when you wash your face today, remember your baptism. Please, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Lastly, thank you to Sylvia Ford, our guest lecturer.